Hey everybody and welcome to another video. Today I want to share with you a free DaVinci Resolve plugin that I recently found that has completely changed the way I color grade in DaVinci Resolve. I don't like using the word game changer that often but I think this plugin is worthy of this word because it is truly a game changer in my personal opinion. However, before we start, I do want to mention that it will only work with the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, not the free one. But even if you have the free one, I would still highly recommend watching this video. Maybe you will learn something new. And once you upgrade to the studio version, you can start implementing this plugin into your workflow because trust me on this one, it will make your color grading much easier. You will get better results and most importantly much quicker so without being mysterious too much the plugin that i want to talk about today is drt which stands for display rendering transform and it will basically do the same thing as the built-in color space transform tool will do in davinci resolve basically it will take you from one color space to another color space but i think the biggest difference between a DRT and a CST is that a DRT is a bit more customized by the developer who developed the DRT, whereas a CST is a bit more technical. I'm not sure if this is accurate, that's my theory. If you want to know more technical information about DRTs or color grading in general, I would highly recommend watching Colin Kelly's videos, which is actually where I learned about DRTs. But honestly, you don't really need to know much technical information because I will show you the difference between using a DRT and a CST. And in most cases, you will see a big difference between these two. So here I have a clip from the Sony ZV-E1 shot in S-Log3. And these are the nodes that I'm using in here. First of all, I have an input device transform and then I have an output device transform or basically a CST out. For the input device transform, it takes me from S-Log3 as Gamut 3 Cine to DaVinci with Gamut Intermediate, which is my timeline color space. My output color space is Rex 109 Type A, which is why I also have an output CST, which takes me from the Vinci with Gamut Intermediate to Rex 109 Type A. And I'm using Rex 109 Type A because I'm grading on a MacBook display. And as far as I know, this is the output gamma you should use if you are previewing your footage on an actual MacBook display. And then in here, I have a primary adjustment, which basically corrects the exposure, white balance and saturation. That's all there is to it. There is no looks, no dehancer, no film looks, nothing like that. Just basic color correction. CST out, CST in. Now, here I also have two nodes, and this is where I'm going to use the DRTs. The first DRT that I'm going to show you today is Open DRT, and the second one is the JP2499 DRT. I'm going to link both of them down below. They are completely free, which is actually very amazing. But before I show the difference, these are the settings that I use for the DRTs. For the Open DRT, everything in here is set to default settings in here as well, except for the display encoding preset, which I've set to display P3, because again, I'm grading on a laptop screen. And then for the JP2499, everything in here as well is set to default settings. This is default. DaVinci with Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. But in here for the output, I've set it to Apple P3 because again, I'm grading on a MacBook screen. So what you are seeing right now is the CST. This is how it looks like with the CST. And I want you to pay close attention to the saturation, colors, contrast, skin tones, and also, you know, the not noise, but slight artifacts in here in the shadows. And now this is OpenDRT. CST, open DRT, CST, open DRT. First of all, the saturation in here is way different. This is a CST, open DRT, CST, open DRT. Then skin tones, look at the skin tones in here. CST, look at the reds, the nasty reds in here. This is a CST, open DRT, CST, open DRT. And I'm gonna go to the shadows right in here. CST, look at these oranges in here, how they look slightly off. Open DRT. CST, open DRT. It looks much cleaner, in my opinion. And now here is the same thing, but with the JP2499 DRT, 
which I actually prefer over the Open DRT. So again, this is CST Open uh, JP2499, CST JP2499. Let's zoom in in here. CST JP2499, CST JP2499. Go to the greens in here. CST JP2499, CST JP. CST JP. And now here is the difference between OpenDRT and JP2499. This is OpenDRT, JP2499, OpenDRT, JP. Let me zoom in. OpenDRT, JP, OpenDRT, JP, and then OpenDRT. JP. I think the JP DRT has a nicer look overall. Again, this is Open DRT JP. Open DRT JP. As you can see, it just looks a bit smoother overall. Less saturation, looks more filmic right from the get go than Open DRT, at least in my opinion. But I do want to mention something. If you go to the Open DRT FX settings in here, you can adjust the look preset in here. So let's say default, colorful, ombra, base. So you can get like a preset, like a look right away within the DRT. And you can also set a contrast curve right in here. So you can choose high contrast, low contrast. Let me actually make it big screen. This kind of a contrast this kind of a contrast and so on and so forth. And also here you can change how warm or cold the image is. So you have a lot of flexibility right in OpenDRT to have a good starting point right away. So you'll need to do less when actually color grading your footage. Whereas with the JP2499 DRT, you do have in here density slider and a couple of other sliders in here for RGB stuff, but you don't have any look presets like with OpenDRT, but Again, honestly, I just prefer using the JP2499 and then I apply a look with the Hunter or Film Creator or manually myself because I think this looks a bit cleaner than the OpenDRT DRT. Here is an example with Apolog footage shot on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is how it looks like with a CST JP. CST JP. CST JP. And here is CST, OpenDRT. CST, OpenDRT. CST, OpenDRT. And here is how all of them look side by side. This is the CST, this is the JP, and this is the OpenDRT. As you can see, the colors with the CST look too punchy and it just doesn't look as filmic as with these uh, DRTs, either the JP1 or the Open DRT. All right, and finally, I want to show you an example from a relatively low-end camera. This is from the DJI Pocket 3 shot in D-Log M and this is with the CST and this is with the JP2499. Like, as you can see, if you look at the skin tones in here, CST, JP2499, CST, JP2499. The skin tones, in my opinion at least, look much more pleasing with the JP DRT. Also the greens, CST, JP, CST, JP. Let me go in here. CST, JP, CST, JP. And now this is CST, open DRT, CST, open DRT, CST, open DRT. Again, look at the skin tones. CST, OpenDRT, CST, OpenDRT. Look at the greens here. CST, OpenDRT, CST, OpenDRT. And finally, again, full screen. CST, OpenDRT, CST, OpenDRT. And here is how all of them compare on a full screen. This is the CST, this is the JP, and this is the OpenDRT. And I think the JP looks the best, like I said. Then OpenDRT also looks great, but this one, I'm just not feeling the colors of this image. The blues are way too saturated. The greens are way too saturated. The skin tones look off. Like look at the look at his legs here and his legs in here. They look much more natural. Like the skin tone color looks much more natural. Also the the jersey, just way too punchy in here. Whereas here it's more tamed, if you will. And I personally prefer this kind of a look because it looks more cinematic. 
if you will. So hopefully I didn't bore you too much today with DRTs, but I would highly recommend experimenting with these plugins, especially since they are free. I'm going to use the JP249 DRT with all of my cameras from now on, because as you saw, it delivers much more cinematic results compared to using like a CST. So go experiment with these plugins, try it out. It's completely free. Worst case scenario, you won't like it. You're going to come back to using CSTs again. And please, if you can donate to these developers, because getting again such tools completely for free is truly amazing. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it to be informative and whatnot. I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.